Finding your unique editing style is one of the hardest parts of becoming a professional photographer. It literally cost me years of experimenting and editing till I found mine. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you a few tips that are gonna help you identify your editing preferences and they're really gonna help you to find your unique style. And one of the first things I want to talk about is about social media. Social media can be incredibly good for us creatives or incredibly bad. So I'm gonna explain how to use it right and how you shouldn't use it. So basically, you shouldn't use social media to be stuck on it, comparing your work to others and copying other photographers' styles. Don't do this because in the end of the day, you're gonna end up doing the same as others and you need to have your very unique style because otherwise, what's the point of becoming a professional photographer? You have to have your unique vision and your unique way to edit. That's the wrong way to do it, but the right way is to find inspiration without getting too stuck on it. So what I would do is to save, because on Instagram you can save posts, so when you like a picture a lot, save it. And you can even save it in different categories. You can create like different boards on Instagram and you can put, I don't know, moody photography and the moody photos you like, bright or high key photography, and you put it there. So just saving boards, the pictures you really love from other photographers, the editing, basically, you really love. Because this is gonna help you to have like an archive of pictures you really like with the editing you like, and then you're gonna be able further to analyze it and have a better perspective of the editing mood you prefer for your photos. And it's not just about finding your style, it's also about building it. So yes, at the beginning, you have to find which kind of photos you identify with, which editing you like. But once you find the vibe you want for your photos, what you have to do is to build your own style. And it seems very hard, and I know it, it is actually, but with time and practice, you're gonna be able to do it. So you shouldn't worry about doing it right away. It's gonna cost a little, but that's totally normal. So for example, what do I mean with building? Maybe you have some presets from your favorite photographers or content creators out there. Can be my presets as well, by the way. <laughs> no matter the presets, but once you buy them or you already have some, what you have to do is deconstruct the preset because this is the beauty of having Lightroom presets. You can deconstruct them, learn a lot from them. This is a great way to learn editing and then tweak some things to make them your own so they can adapt to your own photography style. So don't conform yourself with buying presets. Maybe get it to have a base, because for that, I highly recommend you to do it as a beginner, but then change it and modify it a little, so then you can save it again, and that will be your very own preset. This helps a lot when you are starting. And consider the way you shoot, because I totally ignored this part myself, because I didn't know. So I love moody photography. I cannot expect to edit a picture moody if I'm shooting under direct sunlight, it's impossible. You're gonna have to darken the image a lot and it's not gonna look good. So if you like moody landscape, go to shoot in an overcast day, in a foggy day, in the evening, in the sunrise. You have to match the lighting of the image with the editing you're gonna apply. So pay attention how you shoot, so then the editing matches the picture. And you don't need to edit all the photos in the same way. And this is something we see a lot in social media. I was very stuck on finding like a particular preset or way to edit my photos to have like a very cohesive feed. So this is gonna be the hardest part for you because probably you like so many photographers feeds and you want a style like that for all your photos. For me it didn't work out that way because I do shoot within different niches. So for me I cannot edit different niches in the same way because some photos I want them moody, some photos I don't want them moody, so it's very hard to do something cohesive for all your work. So if you have this problem, I'm gonna show you the perfect example. I do have two Instagram accounts because I do have to separate them. I do have one with portrait photography work and I do have another one with travel photography work. So in the travel account, for me it's easier to keep a specific style because I know I love moody greens, I love moody blues, and the pictures are very similar. Wildlife, lifestyle, travel photos, landscape. It's all related to nature, and the photos I take there, they have the same color palette. So it's way easier to find a specific style. So I apply my Moody Greens preset there, the one I created, and then I just have to do some tweaks depending on the photo, and I have a cohesive style. That's fine. 
But now the perfect example about what I'm talking about is my main account, which is the portrait account. As you can see, I do have moody portraits. I do have high key portraits. I do have portraits done with RGB lights. So it's impossible to edit with the same color gradient for all the photos. It doesn't work. So this was hard for me, but I did have to find a style that is cohesive while not being the same. So that's why I have different presets as well that I created because they have different color gradients, but they are all with the same style. Normally I tend to edit my photos in a very matte finishing. They are very clean. They have an editorial look and sometimes I really love to add uh, blues on my shadows. So this is like a mix of uh, styles I put all together while editing differently the photos. So it doesn't look bad as you can see on my feed. All the photos match with each other, but I don't edit them in the exact same way. So they feel overwhelmed when you cannot find a specific color gradient that works with every single photo because it's totally hard to do that. And then review and practice a lot. So I give you a lot of tips. So then if you apply all of them, you're gonna be able to have on Instagram like a little mood board of the photos you like, the editing you like from other photographers. So you have a good base for you to figure out your style. And then what you have to do is, if you already own presets, pick the ones you like the most, start to apply them in your work, and then do some tweaks to make them your own. So that way you don't copy any photographer and you develop your style. It's way better as a base to start with presets and then to start having a mood board on Instagram or on Pinterest as well. You know guys, I love Pinterest for these kind of things. So just create the mood board and then you're gonna be able to have the base and you're gonna have to practice a lot guys because it takes time. It can take you two weeks, three weeks, one month or it can take years. It did take me years and that's fine. It's totally okay. It's part of the process of learning. I personally edit all my photos in Adobe Lightroom, Luminar Neo, and Adobe Photoshop in that particular order. <laughs> but you want to learn more about that, I did a tutorial about Luminar Neo no long ago and it's a great software and mostly for beginners as well. It's incredible because it has AI features. But regardless of the software you're gonna be using, these tips, you can apply them anyway. And again, guys, if you didn't subscribe yet to my channel, please do it and click the bell button to be notified about my weekly videos. And I will see you very soon. Big love.